everyone, thank you for joining me, Debbie I'm from CarryAdCards.co. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card. This is one of the new stamps from the Spring Summer Catalogue. Oh, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's called Sheltering Tree. So I've got my 6 inch by 6 inch card blank. I'm working with Blushing Bride card, so I've cut a piece to 14 centimetres by 14 centimetres, 5.5 inches by 5.5 inches, and a piece of Whisper White card that I've cut to 13.5 centimetres by 13.5, or 5.25 inches by 5.25 inches. This is the set, Sheltering Tree, and you get the tree um, skeleton there which you can leave like that which is perfect for winter cards and you get this lovely blossom stamp here that's perfect for spring cards, summer cards, change it to yellows and oranges for autumn cards. Then lots of little accessories that you can put on and some beautiful sentiments. I'm going to start off by using the Thinking of You sentiment and I'm going to stamp it onto my card first of all because I always have this fear that I'm going to spend ages making the most beautiful card and right at the end make a mess up with my stamping and my sentiment. So I'm going to do that first of all. So I'm just inking that up in basic black ink and I'm just going to pop that near the top down there and then I know that's done. It's the most beautiful script with this set. Absolutely gorgeous font. It really looks lovely, almost um, like handwriting. And you've got thinking of you, thankful for you, you warm my heart, and friendship is a sheltering tree. Really lovely sentiments. Okay, so I've got my tree stamp, and I tried every brown in the Stamping Up set, and I much preferred the baked brown sugar. Um, for me personally I found the others were just a little bit harsh um, when I wanted to put a blossom through it so I felt this was just the perfect colour and it just gives that lovely spring summer feel. So I'm going to leave some room at the bottom round about halfway up the card because I want to put some green hills at the bottom and I want to put my blossom over the top. Okay, and you see how perfectly that stamps? So I'm just going to pop that on one side and then, oh no, I forgot, oh silly me, I've got a swing there. Oh, my acrylic blocks are in a terrible state. I think I may have to go and give those a good scrub before my next video. So again with the baked brown sugar, oh gosh, I can't believe what a terrible state they're in. How embarrassing on a film. Okay, so ink that up. Your tree, I mean your tree, oh my goodness, your swing has two, um, what do you call them, ropes, and they're slightly, one's taller than the other. So this works really well either if you want to angle it to make it look like it's swinging, or if you want to put it off one of the angled branches. So I'm going to put mine off my branch there, so it just looks slightly like it's been swinging. I quite like that look. Okay, now I'm going to ink up my blossom. Now these are photopolymer stamps and they will stain if you use a dark colour on it. I used red on this earlier and it has stained and it will permanently stain. But don't worry, just clean them off. The staining will not affect your stamp in image in any way, shape or form. It really doesn't matter. Yes, it might worry you the first time you do it but it is not going to affect your stamp image, I promise you. I've got Blushing Bride here, and I'm going to ink this up nice and firmly. Get plenty of ink on that. And then because they're photopolymer, you can see exactly where you're going to place your stamp. Now I obviously want to cover all the branches, and I want a little bit of blossom sort of outside the margins of the branches as well because branches don't go right to the very edges of the leaves, do they? You normally get um, leaves and blossoms which look 
like they've gone past the branches. Okay, putting plenty of pressure on that and take it off. There we go. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is stamp up the grassy hill. This grassy hill comes as part of the set and I only inked my stamp once. I inked it and then I moved it up. It's called shadow stamping so I used the ink that was left on the stamp to give it a shade in the same colour. So there's the stamp and it's got a sort of hill effect. So I'm going to ink that up and then I know I want it to sort of finish about there so I'm going to start it there, lift it off, move it over a little bit and you'll see you get a lighter effect and then I'm going to move it up just so the tree sits at the top of the hill and I've got um, like an ombre effect with the greens and I really like that, I think it looks lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry for a minute and what I did with this one was I made a few little blossoms because it just to me looked like the blossoms were just starting to fall off the tree. So I got some blushing bride card and my um, petal or blossom punch from the itty bitty blossoms set where you get three stamps. Now I punched out three of those, I've just pre-prepared two of them just so you don't have to watch me do the same thing over and over again. Got my finger sponge dauber there and my blushing bride ink. So I'm just going to go over the edges of the petals. It, doing that gives it um, just a bit more dimension, um, adds an extra bit of colour, just makes it look interesting. Then I've got my paper piercing mat and my paper piercing tool. You've seen me use this before. I'm just going to press that rounded end into the flower. It gives it that extra bit of lift and dimension rather than having a flat flower. And then I'm going to pick up a diamante or a rhinestone and pop that in the middle of the flower. I will attach my stamped card to the main card before I put the blossoms on because um, I don't want to be turning it upside down once I've got my flowers in place. So I'm going to pop a bit of glue onto my Blushing Bride card just around the edges and those of you that watch me regularly know that I always say you can adhere your card using whatever method you prefer. So you can use glue, double-sided tape, snail, fast fuse, whatever works for you. Make sure you've got your card opening the right way. I'm sure we've all done it. I know I have more than once. Then ended up having to panic as to how I was gonna remedy my card. So a bit of glue around the outer edge of this. You don't need loads and then pop that on there like so just gives me a bit of wiggle room I haven't quite stuck it down properly okay and then I've got some flowers now where am I? where's my card gone? here okay these I got falling down now because I've done this quite quickly in a bit of a rush I should have given this more time to dry, which I normally do when I'm practicing a card. And you may have noticed, um, I obviously didn't dry it and I've got a few little smudges of ink, but that's where things like this come into their own because you could cover them up. <laughs> How amazing is that? There is no such thing as a mistake on a card. So instead of having blossoms there, I think I might just do that and then nobody is gonna be any the wiser. Just don't tell anybody I've done that, okay? <laughs> I'm just using some glue dots to attach these on. You can use dimensionals if you prefer. Put that on there and there. Nobody would know that <laughs> I'd smudge that, would they? And another glue dot here. And again, pop that on there. 
and yes it's a slightly different design to the other one but isn't that the beauty don't particularly want all cards to look the same so I can now say that both of these are absolutely unique and individual and they look perfectly fine like that so there we have two thankful for you cards made with the sheltering tree stamp set in blushing bride and old olive and baked brown sugar i hope that you've enjoyed watching this video um, if you have drop me a comment i'd love to hear from you take care and i hope to see you next time it's goodbye from me debbie at carryadcards.co